This video is going to be a quick run through of the different board types I use for group work in Trello. I hope to do a more thorough run through of these ideas in the future, but for now this should give you the basics. There are three major board types I use for group work. Group work or open work boards, pipeline boards, and resource boards. I'm going to start by showing you pipeline boards. The basic idea of a pipeline board is that instead of having just to do, doing, and done as the columns, you have a different column for each stage in the standard pipeline of work. So for example, if we're doing a pizza pipeline, you could have the order received, have the dough, the sauce, the cheese, and so on. So when an order was received, you could put that in as a card, and as the pizza was being made at each step of the pipeline, it would be moved to the appropriate column and assigned to the appropriate person. Anyone during that process who had a specific note to make could do so. This allows the pipeline to work as a tool for group communication, as well as a way to see where projects are at from a bird's eye view. This structure is especially useful in what's being created can be transmitted digitally. For example, digital files for a project going through the editing process with multiple editors can be especially effective. Each person can drag and drop their copy after edits, and the attachments are automatically arranged chronologically. And just to demonstrate how effective the bird's eye view can be, here's a look at one of my boards that contains all of the sources I'm using for a major writing project. These sources are arranged by what status they're in for me. Some of them still have to be retrieved, some are in my possession but still need to be reviewed, and so on. This makes it very easy for me to see what needs to come next, where there might be some holdups in the system, and it ensures that none of my individual sources fall through the cracks. In many cases here, I can actually upload a digital copy of the source I'm using. In other cases, I simply make a note that I have it in print and in my possession. Next up, we have group boards. The idea of group boards is when there is work that can be done by any number of people, but it hasn't officially been assigned, that there's a place where it can be thrown and people can claim it. This is especially useful when the work being done is voluntary. It can then work as well as a resource and note page for that group for any additional information that would be really useful for them. So any files that everyone on the team is likely to benefit from, notes, official policies, etc. In its simplest form, a task would be put up, any details for that task provided within the note itself. Any attached files that are useful would be included. And when someone felt up to doing the task, they would assign it to themselves and move it over to the doing column. Due to the nature of these boards, it's a really good idea for anyone who's in a supervisor or overseeing or organizational position to subscribe to the board as a whole and if you create a card and need help with something, for example, it's a good idea to subscribe to that specific card so that you can know if someone claims it or leaves a comment on it. The last board type I'm going to show you is what I just call a resource board, and this can be any number of things. Uh, one good thing that I've found is using contacts, where you compile the useful contacts for various things, be it the officers in a club or the members of an organization, people to collaborate with, uh, official contacts, anything and everything that's useful to have in a more advanced organizational structure and that may be valuable to share with other members of your organization or team. Of course, this isn't the only way you can use a resource board. You can do an advice board, uh, information, if you have a whole lot of different files or meeting notes or anything else that just has a lot of bulk over time. It may not be a good idea just to put that in a list inside of another board. So putting that in its own board that's clearly labeled can be an effective way to group and share those resources. For those of you working on a project with me, that overview should, if not quite making these crystal clear, at least make these boards comprehensible as we start to use them. Please do let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns.